God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. Good morning and blessings. People have prayed to God, creator, to a deity, or a spirit power, either individually or in community for a very long time. Prayer may involve words, song, silence, symbols, art. People pray for so many reasons and in so many different ways. Some anthropologists like to say that the earliest intelligent moderns, modern humans, I mean, prayed somehow. It would be false to think that everything we know about prayer came from Jesus. But he did teach his disciples and Christians along the way a thing or two about praying to God. In addition to William's baptism today, we're celebrating the ascension of John. I'm sorry, of Jesus. So perhaps the prayer from the Gospel of John that we heard just now was Christ's way of letting God know what he wanted. He said as much in the beginning of the Gospel, I'm praying to you on behalf of my disciples, Father. Jesus prayed for the people to be one, just as Jesus and God were one, and also for the people to know that he would be leaving this physical place. But in his absence, they would be held together by the Spirit, by the Spirit of oneness that he enjoyed with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. You've heard me say before, I like to imagine the Holy Spirit as the bond, sort of the binding agent. I guess it's part of my, you know, sort of chemistry background. The binding agent of our spirits on this plane. Chapter 17 of John's Gospel is, in its entirety, a complete prayer. And today's 14 verses give us a glimpse of what Jesus wanted God and the people of God to know about being one in Him. Him, triune Him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Him, Her, God. Today's prayer was intercessory, something we often do on behalf of others as I ask the kids, who do you pray for? What do you pray for? I like the one from Aiden, I pray for the world. He went global on us. <laughs> he, Jesus, prayed on behalf of his disciples, the world, and the people, the world, people that he had touched in his life so that they would be given grace. <coughs> Grace to believe in God and to continue carrying out Christ's mission to proclaim good news. The good news of God, the good news of Jesus, the good news of the Holy Spirit. The language in the prayer between God the Son and God the Father is beautiful. I, I ask that you please read that gospel again after today. It's beautiful, it's simple, it's clear, it's direct. Words like Father, God, the word name, we are named by God. Word, truth, glory, one, joy, world. I didn't know that Aiden would be praying for the world, but world is in that gospel. At the center of this prayer is oneness. Just like Christ and the Father are one, Jesus prayed that all who would follow him continue being one with the Trinity of God. The prayer for oneness has always been important to me. As a kid, being a in, a, in, in my family, a sort of 
tribal way. Puerto Ricans do things in big ways with a lot of people. But that was important to me, that tribal sort of sense of family, extended friends and neighbors. It was important to me as a teen. You know, I guess a psychiatrist might say, yeah, you always need to be in community. Yeah, that's just the way I am. So I make no excuses for that. No, no um, surprise that I'm a parish priest. And also, this sense of oneness is what we do here, or try to do as best as we can. Not only here among our Spanish-speaking members, but also with our, with our English-speaking members, or the other way around, right? We're trying to be, and we will be, a bilingual and bicultural community. That's part of that oneness, making the effort, making it happen. As a priest who happens to be bilingual and bicultural, it is, it is a mission for me to create oneness. And no, it's not easy. And yes, it's frustrating, because in all of it, we deal with people. And as people of God, we try to do what we know how to do. It's like the school cafeteria image. Oh, I'm going to sit with my buddies, with my friends, with the ones who look like me. That's common. That's nature. But Jesus is above nature. And so Jesus' intention is break down those walls. Make it different. And so here we are, making it different. The oneness that Jesus prayed for is possible. I know it is. Yes, we're a work in progress, but so is Christianity a work in progress. So the mission to be one is not only ours, it's global, as I said earlier. All things are possible with God, with faith, with commitment, with tenacity, with patience, with love. The Apostle Paul is one of my biblical heroes, and I'll tell you why. He made it his priority to break the socio-cultural groupie movement of his time. He and other Pauline disciples dedicated their mission and ministry to be about oneness in Christ by helping the Romans, the Corinthians, the Galatians, the Ephesians, the Colossians, and the Thessalonians to learn to be Christians and to hold themselves together as a community of believers. In a few minutes, I will call William John Quentmeyer and his family here to be baptized in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With the spiritual initiation and benediction into the Holy Christian family that comes with the sacrament of baptism, you, the faith community of St. Gabriel's, will welcome Will into this oneness that Paul and I are talking about. The oneness of faith and belief that Jesus invoked as he prayed to God in that 17th chapter of John. I invite all of you, Janine, Pat, Godparents, Nora, and all of you here to pay close attention to the words of the baptismal covenant which are printed in the bulletin. We're going to pray those words for and with will. Just like Christ prayed for those who would follow him, we are actually invoking God to give will the will to follow Jesus. We are going to pray in our baptismal covenant that will and every person here try our best to be one regardless of race, creed, sexual orientation, gender, socioeconomic level, and yes, I said creed, one with all people, no matter what they believe, because we're all creatures of God. Oneness doesn't mean that we lose our unique identities. Very important. 
Rather that we uphold a Catholic identity, Catholic little c, Catholic identity by which I mean a universal, inclusive, diverse, wide, broad, eclectic, and comprehensive identity, not groupy identity. Jesus taught this by word and by deed. I am saying this because we forget this. We're human. So I'm just reminding all of us about our Catholicity. This is a time in our world where it is important to remember little c, universal Catholic, all, one body, oneness. Jesus as our Savior and lover and the Holy Spirit as our companion, God as creator above all things, invites us to uphold oneness. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, our universal Catholicity invites us to pray for and uphold the dignity of every human being in every circumstance. Why? Because with God all things are possible. We can make it happen. Therefore, as we baptize Will this morning, I invite you to pray for him with a lot of intentionality. I know that's how we all pray. I'm going to invite the children to come forward and pray over the water of his baptism so that they can become part, physically part, of praying for Will. Will will inherit the spirit of unity and oneness in Christ through our prayers. Amen. Amen.